Step up, Jess. Don't step on you. Okay, there's one person. Hey, Mike, can you hear me okay? Okay. Okay, and then when people speak, they step up, we step up. Okay. We're starting, guys. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not saying good because right now it's not a good morning for Breonna Taylor and the supporters of Breonna Taylor and her family. I'm attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Lanita Baker, attorney Sam Aguiar, my law partner, attorney Chris O'Neill. We have the honor of representing and fighting for respect, dignity, and justice for Breonna Taylor and her family. We have present with us her mother, Tamika Palmer, her sister, Janaya, her aunt, Bianca Austin. We also have who I call the queen of the movement for Brianna, Tamika Mallory, and Until Freedom. We also have the Brianna Square activists who are present with us today. And Attorney Baker and Aguiar and I know without a shadow of a doubt, without the activist community saying her name, there is no way we would have gotten this far with all over the world people saying Brianna Taylor's name. Say her name. Also, we are joined by a man who did an incredible thing this morning. Jacob Blake Jr. father, Jacob Blake Sr. traveled from Kenosha, Wisconsin to be here with Tamika Palmer, Brianna's mother. And so we also have state representative Charles and uh, State Representative Charles Booker and State Representative Attica, who are present, Attica Scott, who are present with us today. Fresh out of jail for standing for Breonna Taylor. Now, that's the transformation of leadership we need in America as we head into this November 2nd election that matters so much for so many reasons. But for this moment in particular, this moment matters for Breonna Taylor. So if you were marching for Breonna Taylor, if you were exercising your First Amendment rights for Breonna Taylor, if you were protesting for Breonna Taylor, if you signed a petition for Breonna Taylor, we need you to go sign a ballot and vote on November 2nd for Brianna Taylor. November 3rd. I'm thinking early vote. That's right. Early vote. That's right. That's right. You know, obviously, Tamika Palmer and her entire family, her father, is here from Michigan. Mm, mm. Yeah, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Breonna Taylor's entire family is heartbroken, yeah. devastated, mm -hmm. and outraged, and confused, mm. and bewildered, mm -hmm. just like all of us, as to what did Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron present to the grand jury. Mm. Did he present any evidence mm. on Breonna Taylor's behalf? Mm. Or did he make a unilateral decision mm. to put his thumb on the scales of justice to help 
trying to exonerate mm. and justify the killing of Breonna Taylor by these police officers, and in doing so, make sure that Breonna Taylor's family never got their day in court, never got their chance for due process, and in essence, denied them justice. That's why we are standing here today, united in solidarity, declaring and demanding to release the transcripts of the grand jury proceedings so we can know if there was anybody giving a voice to Breonna Taylor. Because with these results from this grand jury, Tamika Mallory, you know, wanton endangerment wow. for the white neighbor's apartment My that God. lived next to her, but no wanton endangerment for the bullet tray that went into the apartment of the black neighbors above her apartment, and no wanton endangerment for the bullets that went actually into Breonna Taylor's apartment and Lanita, no wanton murder charges for the bullets that mutilated Breonna Taylor's body. Mr. Blake, it underscores what we have been saying all along. There seems to be two justice systems in America, mm -hmm. one for black America and one for white America. And this has been emphasized by this grand jury proceeding into the killing of Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, Sam Aguiar, it, it's kind of ironic when you think about the message that is being sent from this grand jury ruling. It's like they charged the police for missing shooting bullets into black bodies, but not charging the police for shooting bullets into black bodies. Where that happen at? In Kentucky, in Louisville, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we question what evidence did Kentucky Attorney General send to the grand jury? Yes, did he tell them about the probable cause affidavit that had a lie on that affidavit, which was the basis yes. for which the judge signed this no-knock warrant in the first place to allow them to be at Brianna's apartment and bust open her door. Because if he didn't send that, my son, well, what did he argue on Brianna's behalf? Did he tell them about the 12 neighbors that Sam Aguilar's office interviewed and recorded that lived in close proximity of Brianna's apartment that all said they did not hear the police knock and announce their presence. Mm -hmm. Did he let them testify before the grand jury? Oh. Did he allow the one neighbor who they keep proclaiming that heard the police knock and announce, mm, yeah. testify be before mm. the grand jury, even though, Tamika, mm. as I understand, on two previous occasions, mm. he declared that he did not hear the police knock wow. and announce. Mm. Wow. So is this the only person out of her apartment complex did he allow to testify before the grand jury? That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem like you're fighting for Brianna. That doesn't seem like you're putting forth evidence for justice for Brianna. Did he let the cops who shot over 30 rounds of bullets in Brianna's apartment 
one from outside the apartment shooting recklessly and blindly, and the others who shot bullets into her body? Did he allow them to testify before the grand jury? Did he allow Brianna's boyfriend, Kenny Walker, to testify before the grand jury? Did he talk about them sending the ambulance away mm. before they executed this no not warrant, violating their own policies and procedures, mm. knowing that these no not warrants are dangerous? Mm -hmm. And it was foreseeable that somebody could be injured, a citizen or a police or a third party innocent bystander like Breonna Taylor, who lived in that apartment who had every right to legally be in that apartment, who did not have a gun, was only clothed in her night clothes, mm. and had every right to live and breathe in her apartment. Mm. Did he right. present that to the grand jury? Well, if he didn't present these things to the grand jury, what kind of sham grand jury proceeding was this? Yeah. 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 It follows a pattern. It follows a pattern, Bianca, of the blatant disrespect and marginalization of black people, mm. but especially yes. black right. women yeah. in America right. who have been killed by police. Because part of Brianna's legacy will always be just like Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown raised America's consciousness level and attention to Black Lives Matter, Brianna's legacy will be that black women life matters too. So when we think about this grand jury proceeding, if you want us to accept the result, then release the transcript. That's right. That's right. Release the transcript so we can have transparency. And if you did everything that you could do on Brianna's behalf, you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever, Daniel Cameron, to releasing the transcript so that we can see you fought for all of Kentucky's citizens especially including Tamika Palmer's daughter, mm. Breonna Taylor. Mm. Release the transcript. Release, Release the transcript. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. Release the transcripts. 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 Y'all, I don't know if Daniel Cameron can hear us. Let's say it from the heart so not only Daniel Cameron can hear us, but Breonna Taylor can hear us from heaven. What we want Daniel Cameron, the Kentucky Attorney General, to do. On three. One, two, three. Release the transcripts. At this time, you know, before I bring up uh, one of the greatest lawyers, one of the greatest secrets yes, in sir. Louisville, Kentucky, yes, my co-counsel, uh, my sister, right. my co-warrior, right. right. Lanita Baker, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, Brianna, people, I'm sorry, Tamika, people who are in the fraternity that you're in from all over America, a fraternity that no parent wants to be in, but far too many black mothers and fathers are part of, have sent their pledge of support to stand with you. All of them couldn't come like Mr. Jacob Blake Sr., but all of them sent their support I, when the announcement came out, Falonis, Floyd, and Rodney Floyd, and Bridget Floyd, the brothers and sisters from George mm. Floyd, 
who was killed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, were the first ones to pledge their support. And then right after that, Lanita, we got a call from uh, Sabrina Fulton's, Trayvon Martin's mother. Mm -hmm. Then right after that, we got a uh, text from Michael Brown's mother, uh, Leslie McSpadden, and then right after that, we got a call from Botham Jones' mother who was mm -hmm. killed in his apartment in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. and, and we got a call from his mother, Allison Jones, and his sister, Alicia Finley. We got a call from House Representative uh, Lucy McBath, who father mm. Jordan Davis. Yes. Our son was killed for playing loud music. Yes. We got a call from Dr. Tiffany Crutcher, the twin sister of Terrence Crutcher, who was killed in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was hands up, don't shoot on video, Tamika. We got a call from Gwen Carr, Eric Gardner's mother from Staten Island, New York. We got a call from Tamir Rice's mother, Tamaria Rice. We got a call from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Philando Castile's mm. mother. Oh my God. We got a call from Stefan Clark's brother, Stefante, and grandmother, who was killed in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. We got notified that Sandra Bland's mother is pledging her support mm. to be with you. We got notified that Ezell Ford, mm -hmm. our brother who was having a mental health crisis mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, California, is pledging his support. Dijon Kenzie, who was shot 15 times two weeks ago in the back by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I left Los Angeles coming here. His aunt who raised him literally weak for you, even though she had just lost her nephew who she raised as her own son. Uh, Joseph Richardson's mother, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So we are here declaring in Breonna Taylor's name, enough mm. is enough, yeah. America. Enough, enough is enough, enough America. Yeah. Enough, enough is enough, enough America. America. Enough is enough, 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 America. Please join me in welcoming a great champion for justice, my co-counsel from the law firm of Sam Aguiar, who's also present with us here and deserves acknowledgement. A great great lawyer. We give you attorney Lanita Baker. I know attorney Crump has demanded that we release the transcript and I echo that demand. Amen. And we don't want to hear that you can't release the transcript because you released the recording of Kenny Walker's uh, mm. Tell it! Grand, Walker, uh, grand jury proceedings. Mm. So you can release the recording and we demand that you release the recordings. But not only do we want the recordings and the transcript, what we also want is for you to quit dodging the questions, Daniel mm. Cameron. Mm. Mm. You were asked at the press conference, did you make a recommendation? You refused to answer. Mm. Answer the question. Mm. Right. Answer the question. And I've asked you several times, did you even present any charges regarding Breonna Taylor to the grand jury? Mm. I don't want to hear that the grand jury determined this if it's your office that unilaterally determined not to charge any officers with the death of Breonna Taylor. Right, right, you can't right, pawn right. this off the grand jury on the grand jury if your office made that decision. Yeah. And we, the voters, that deserve the right to know who is it that we need to say got it wrong. Yes, mm. right. yes. Tell it. That's right. Did the grand jury get it wrong on, uh, in using the defense of justification? Or did your office get it wrong? Mm -hmm. Because what we know in Kentucky, 
And what many of you may not know is I practiced criminal law for 13 years in this Commonwealth of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I did it as a prosecutor and a defense attorney. So I know the law of self-defense in Kentucky. And I know that you don't have the right to use the defense of self-defense when you injure or kill an innocent third party. Mm. And what we know from Sergeant Mattingly's own testimony to the Public Integrity Unit is that he saw that Breonna Taylor was unarmed. Yes. Yes. His own testimony, he right. saw Breonna Taylor was unarmed. And then you made a lot of it, you put a lot of attention on the bullet, that the, the fatal, the fatal shot to Breonna Taylor being made by Miles Cosgrove. If he wasn't able to see Breonna Taylor, to also see that she was unarmed, then he also was firing just as recklessly as Brett Matt Hankinson, right. and right. he deserves to be here charged with one murder of Breonna Taylor. Yeah. If he yeah. didn't see her, he didn't have target acquisition, he deserves to be charged right now. Mm. Right. Come on, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you feel. So don't tell us that the grand jury made this determination if it was truly your determination. Answer that question head on. Was it your office's decision or was it the grand jury's decision? Release the transcript. Mm. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. And I know we have a lot going on, and I've been angry. I have been angry, and I'm angry because, as I said, I've been, I've worked in this system. I worked as a prosecutor who fought so hard to make sure I was administering justice regardless of who the victim was, regardless of who the perpetrator was. And that's the only way that the system's going to work is to have prosecutors, Daniel Cameron, that work for us. And Daniel Cameron, I do. I, I took offense to you not being fully up front with mm. Tamika Palmer when we met mm. with you. Mm. Right. Mm. Should've never mm. there. Should've never I take there. true offense to that. And you have to know your legal obligations as a prosecutor is to inform the family, mm. to talk to the family, to keep them uh, informed on what's going on. Mm -hmm. You failed to do that, and you failed to be fully honest with her when we met with you be while the grand jury report was being relayed to the public. So you told us we would know in advance. We learned at the same time that America learned. That's unacceptable. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We have a right to be angry. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I do want to talk to, to those of us who have been on the ground. Mm -hmm. We can't let the anger consume us. Because we still got work to do. Mm. Tell it. And we can't fully think when we're consumed by anger. Yeah. And so I've been praying. I've been praying this morning to not let the anger that's been inside mm -hmm. of me consume me and come out today. Because I know we have work to do. Mm -hmm. I'm dressed down today because I'm staying down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I want LMPD majors who say that we're the ones out here washing cars yeah. or checking you out at Walmart. Yeah. No, we're not. We're lawyers. Right. We're business people. Mm -hmm. we're, we're city employees just like you. Right. And guess what? Even if I was washing That's your right. car, right. it doesn't matter. I have a right to use my voice. Right. Two years ago, I was checking people in and out of a hotel, too, while also practicing as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When I was there, I was the same person that I am practicing, mm -hmm. practicing mm -hmm. law. Right. So, LMPD, you have to change the mentality of who you're fighting. You're not going to have this city of Louisville believe that Attica Scott, Shamika Parrish, Rhonda Mathis, and those who were with them was mm. burning down a library. Right. Stop right. the lies. Right. We can't right. move forward with the lies. Yes. We can't move forward with the lies. We know that we need healing. We know that this city needs healing. And we're willing to do our part. But you have to do your part. And until you start doing your part, we won't heal. That's right. We're here. We're here when you're ready to listen to us, yes. to Amen. come down. And I challenge those of you who are off today, you don't have to come down and protest, but I challenge you to come down here and listen to the people mm, who are protesting. Right. Exactly. Those of you who are elected officers, that's come down right. here during the day. Right. Listen Tell to the protesters. Right. Business people who have sent me inboxes, we support you. Support us by coming down here, showing them that we are not, we are not just car washers checking people out. Right. There's enemy. so many more people down here. And quit spewing, media quit spewing mm -hmm. the way that people are protesting. Okay. You know the majority of the people okay. down here are non-balanced. Mm -hmm. You've been down here for 120 days. Mm -hmm. You know it. Okay. Quit making it seem like they're balanced. They're mm -hmm. not. Okay. That's why we're LMPD. Yes, shout out to the Bible.
go to live stream us because that is how we're learning the truth. That is how we're learning the truth. Regular media, take a cue. Film it all. Don't slant it. Tell the truth. LMPD, tell the whole truth. Everybody, tell the whole truth, including you, Daniel Cameron. Did you make the decision or did the grand jury make the decision? That's why I call her my co-warrior. Right. Not co-counselor, co-warrior. <laughs> Lanita Baker. Yes. Let me repeat that. Maybe they didn't hear me. That's, right. That's why I call her my co-warrior. Right. Not yeah. co-counselor, yeah. co-warrior. Right. Right. And Attorney Aguiar, the secret's out the bag now. Yeah. The secret is out the bag. What a great, well-kept secret Kentucky has in yeah. attorney Lanita Baker. And yeah. boy, I tell you, it's a wake-up call to these elected officials mm -hmm. because she represents the most talented, most articulate, most intellectual representative of this city that we have to offer. Yeah. And so if you don't do your job, it's going to be Coming people like Tamika, I'm sorry, like Lanita Baker or yeah. others mm -hmm. who going to take your seat. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You're going to lose your job. <laughs> Before we bring this next champion of justice up, we want to have a statement from the family. You know, Sam and Trader Truth for 191 days, people all across America, people elected in Washington like Senator Kamala Harris, people in the National Basketball Association mm -hmm. and the Women's National mm -hmm. Basketball Association, NFL players, our celebrities, right. who uh, we all called to the protest. Right. Uh, Y'all remember they came mm -hmm. to the Capitol, mm -hmm. like Jada Pinkett yep. Smith and Common and, yep. and so many others. Rhapsody. But Rhapsody, Rhapsody yeah. so many others. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, just regular people, regular, regular, regular folk, people. black, white, Hispanic, Native, all over the world have been saying, say her name. Yes. And how insulting was it on the indictment that Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron didn't mention her name one time. So, Tamika Palmer, before we bring your sister up to speak, I want you all to do me a favor. Since he didn't say it in the indictment, say her name. 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 Yeah, next we will hear from the sister of Tamika Palmer, the aunt of Breonna Taylor, Bianca Austin, who I will tell you, before we were fighting for Breonna Taylor, she was like the lawyer on the front line leading the protest. So it is aptly appropriate for Bianca to come and make a statement on behalf of the family. So I will ask for the charity of your undivided attention while she read a message from the family and especially from the heart of Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer. Please, Miss Austin. Thank you, thank you. 
Oh, well, I'm standing here today. I'm mm. going to represent my niece in her EMT jacket. Mm. Um, I chose this just to have her be a part of us today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I just want to shout out to our family. Yeah, um, yeah. It's been a long six months, um, and it's been a, a wild roller coaster. Not only have we been out here fighting for justice for Brianna, but we are continuing to lose our family members uh, to cancer, to COVID, to being murdered. And so um, my message is to you is just cry your tears, lift your head up, and keep stepping. Um, I hear you, Bianca. And most of you know this has been emotionally, mentally, and physically draining for my sister. So I'm going to do the honor and read her thoughts. Um, after Daniel Cameron's um, decision. And I quote, I never had faith in Daniel Cameron to begin with. Amen. I knew he was too inexperienced to deal with a job of this caliber. Mm. I knew he had already chosen to be on the wrong side of the law. Mm. The moment he wanted to, the grand jury to make the decision, what I had hoped is that he knew he had the power to do the right thing, mm -hmm. that he had the power to start the healing of this city, that he had the power to help men over 400 years of oppression. Mm -hmm. What he helped me realize is that it will always be us against them, yeah. that we are never safe when it comes to them. Mm -hmm. Maddenly, in an email, called us animals and thugs. It's clear that... That is the way that they will always see us. I, will reassure, I was reassured Wednesday of why I have no faith in the legal system, in the police, in the law that are not made to protect us black and brown people. But when I speak on it, I'm considered an angry black woman. Mm. But know this, I am an angry black woman. Hey. Hey. I am not angry for the reasons that you would like me to be. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But... Angry because our black women keep dying at the hands of police black officers. Men. Black men. And, and black men. Mm. Okay. Angry because our children are dying at the hands of police officers. Mm -hmm. And I'm angry because this nation is learning that our black women dying at the hands of police officers. And this is not okay. Mm. Not you can take the dog out of the fight. Mm. But you can't take the fight out of the dog. Say it again. For lack of better terms, bark, bark for being the dog still standing to fight. Mm. Yeah. I knew Cameron would never do his job. Mm. But what I do know is that him and countless others will go to bed sleeping with Brianna's face, still hearing her say her name. Yeah. Cameron alone didn't fail her. But it ended with the lack of investigation failed her. Mm. The officer who told a lie to obtain a search warrant failed her. Mm. The judge who signed the search warrant failed her. The terrorist who broke down her door failed her. Mm. The system as a whole has failed her. You didn't just rob me of my and my family. You robbed the world of a queen. Mm. A queen willing to do a job that most of us could never stomach to do. A queen willing to build up anyone around her. A queen who was starting to pave her path. Mm -hmm. I hope you never have to know the pain of knowing your child is in need and help and you're not able to give them. Mm. I hope you never hear the sounds of seeing someone cry and beg for your child to get help and she never receives help. Those cries was ignored. I hope you never know the pain of your child being murdered 191 days in a row. Mm. Tamika Palmer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I am so sorry. Yes, so sir. sorry you got to go through this. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. It's unacceptable. Yeah. But your family got your back. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're not going nowhere. We got your back. Right? Until freedom has your back. Right. Right. Lanita has your back. Right. Ben has your yeah. back. Right. Your daddy has your back. Right. And guess what? I got it this park. Yeah. Right. These people that's yeah. out here stomping on these grounds. That's right. Has your back. That's yeah. right. Stomping on these grounds. That's right. Flush out. Yeah. Flush out. Yeah. Flush out. Sam got her back. Oh, you yeah. know. That's right. And God definitely. That's it. Thank you.
Thank you, Bianca. And thank you for reading. Thank you for reading the words from a mother's heart. A heart that is broken. Thank you, Bianca. That was heartfelt. Every mother around the world could feel Tamika's pain. We just take a moment for a second yeah. to reflect on what we just heard. Yeah. Just know we love you, Tamika Palmer. We're standing with you. Okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you can get me as wet as you want. <laughs> what a wonderful soul. At this time, I, I, I really mean it because I, I, when Lanita and Sam called me, you know, black women are often disrespected. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we were calling people in the media, and we know it's the call celeb now, but people were not trying to do stories mm -hmm. on Breonna Taylor, this black woman who was killed by the police. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did not return my calls mm -hmm. as we were begging to give attention to Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, a lot of people did answer the call, yeah. and, and I won't go through the list, but one young woman who answered the call, I had known she was a champion for justice, five days fighting for Trayvon Martin, and so many other families that have been inflicted with this police terrorism mm. that claimed the lives of their loved ones. Mm. And not only did she answer the bell, she said, Crump, we are not going to leave this until we get charges. And it was deep to me, Lanita, and you remember, we then started going on her social media uh, and doing the Instagram lives just to try to bring awareness to Breonna Taylor's name. And, and I remember others allowing us to use their platform. And I don't want to take anything away from Ricky Smiley and Charlemagne and Tesla Figaro and Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, allowing us to go on this TV show. But this young lady, almost every day, went on social media and followed Janiah's lead. Because remember, Tamika, Janiah every day went on social media and said, my sister, Breonna Taylor, life mattered when nobody else was listening. But then this young lady got involved and had us on sound on her social media every day. And we strategized every day. And then she said, you know what, Crump, me and my organization, Until Freedom, we're moving to Louisville, Kentucky, and we're going to stay every day because if Tamika Palmer can't sleep in peace, neither can we. And we're going to come and be in solidarity together demanding justice for Bri Breonna Taylor. And for, I think now, over four months, you all have been here, living here this whole time. And that's why I call her the queen of the movement for justice for Breonna Taylor, my sister, my warrior, my freedom fighter, Tamika Mallory. No justice. No peace. 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 And if there ain't going to be no justice, there ain't, ain't going to be, be no, no peace. peace. You know, I want to read something to you all that I learned of just the day after um, Daniel Cameron's decision. 
It says, it is a great honor to receive the endorsement of the bipartisan Kentucky Fraternal Order of Police. To the men and women in blue, I pledge to be your advocate and your voice every day. When I first got into this race, I did so to bring focus to the public safety challenge of our lifetime, the drug crisis. And there is so much work to be done to fight this epidemic. I am humbled to have this endorsement. And as a chief law enforcement officer in Kentucky, I will work every day to make our community safer and our families and cities, citizens more secure. Half of that, oh, that statement is from Daniel Cameron when he received the endorsement of the FOP, one of the most racist organizations that exist in America. I got time today. Okay. And half of that statement was a lie. Daniel Cameron is not here to protect citizens and to make the state of Kentucky safer. But he was honest about one part. And that is that he is an advocate for police well, and that he was going to be their voice mm -hmm. and to do whatever is necessary to protect them. Whatever. And so we learned that he stood. He's a man of his word as it relates to his relationship to police. Mm -hmm. He protected the police and it did not matter to him one bit that those same officers could have ran in his mama, his black mama's well, house, yeah, well, and shot her to death. He's more committed to the white supremacy well, that he is upholding. Mm -hmm. He mentioned at the press conference, which I thought was quite interesting, mm -hmm. that he's a black man. Mm -hmm. well, right. oh. And as I laid and cried <laughs> and hurt for Tamika Palmer, and for Breonna Taylor, and for Kenny Walker, and for Janiyah, who we need to love up on. As I laid there, and I thought about him saying he's a black man, I thought about the ships that went into Fort Monroe and Jamestown with our people on them over 400 years ago, and how there were also black men on those ships that were responsible for bringing our people over here. Daniel Cameron is no different than the sellout Negroes wow. that sold our people into slavery and helped white men to capture our people, to abuse them and to traffic them while our women were raped, while our men were raped by savages. That is who you are, Daniel Cameron. You are a coward. You are a sellout. And you were used by the system to harm your own mama, your own black mama. We have no respect for you. No respect for your black skin. Because all of our skin folk ain't our kin folk. And you do not belong to black people at all. We learned that on the same exact day that this announcement came out, it was the day that in September of, I forget the year, 1955, 65, no, 1955, which was 65 years ago, Emmett Till was also killed again, denied justice, because the two white officers responsible for, the two white men, excuse me, responsible for killing him were let free. Mm. That happened on the same day. Now, I don't know if it's just that Daniel Cameron is stupid <laughs> or that he is very, very, very clear about history well, and made a decision yes, to wait six months come and come forward with this announcement this garbage that we received right. on the exact same day right. that Emmett Till's family received the same result. Oh, cool. And the historical society. And the historical, oh. 
But I want you to understand how wicked he is. How wicked he is. And how wicked this system is. Attorney Sam Aguiar, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I got to say it. Y'all know I, do, I push the envelope too far all the time. That's all right. Attorney right. Sam Aguiar said he spoke to the attorney general's office mm -hmm. and told them, do not have mm -hmm. Tamika Palmer come all the way to Frankfurt, which is an hour drive away, to hear bad news and have to drive back. Mm -hmm. Do not do that to her. You can call on the telephone to tell her bad news. Mm -hmm. And that wicked man yeah. called for her to come there anyway and had this black mama to have to drive home with her sister and her family after hearing that they didn't even mention her daughter's name in the damn indictment process in this grand jury hearing. How dare you? What kind of man are you? How dare you? And we are not going home. We will make sure that this city is as uncomfortable as it can be. And we intend and we intend to travel across the state of Kentucky and make sure that in every corner of this state they know who you are, Daniel Cameron, and who is upholding the system of white supremacy that continues to oppress our people. The last thing we will say is, Mayor Fisher, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Do not think for one moment that you're going to hide behind a settlement or hide behind reform that we are happy to see that you actually support it, but it must be implemented, and we have to make sure that that work is done. But the main thing that matters at this point you can have the National Guard, the mm. Army, the white militia, the whoever you want to have here, LMPD, whoever you want to have. Anybody, turn them loose. Tell them, turn them loose. But until you fire those cops, until your investigation returns the results that the police officers who murdered, they said they were mad at me for using the language murder. I said what I said. They murdered Breonna Taylor. And until those officers are fired from this department, I promise you, I promise you, we will continue to make these streets hot. Now, and today at 5 o'clock, just for anybody who's wondering when to meet us, we're going to be outside. We're going to be outside. The last thing I want to tell you all is that, I, 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 you know, I'm a, I'm a visitor. So I, I observe. And our team, we, we, we don't live here permanently, but we temporarily live here. And we observe a lot. So last night as we broke curfew, because that's what we do. That's what we do. Every night. And we prepare for whatever that means. We drove around and we noticed that there were some other people breaking curfew. Uh -oh. There was other people breaking curfew. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And, and, we, and we were coming, we were rushing from a meeting to try to get to a church that is being a, a place of sanctuary for protesters so that they can be inside because that's what y'all said y'all wanted us to do was to be inside. Is, am I right about that? And so these folks were on their way to go inside and to disrespect the state representative, Attica Scott, Shamika Parrish, who is a leader in this community, and say, and other women, other black women, and other individuals, and to say that they were actually burning down something. As attorney Lanita Baker says, it is despicable. It's despicable, and you are liars. Yeah. But as I was riding around, and we saw all these people in one place at a Shell gas station that is not far from here. Jefferson and First. Jefferson and First. I was looking, and I said, I said, wait, we got to stop, because is that the police? Is it the military? No, it was the white militia. And it was after 9 o'clock, and they were breaking curfew with me. So what I want to know is, is it okay for us to even be at a church? And them, they can be outside, but we can't be at a church. I thought
thought Mayor Fisher said that he wanted the churches and the mosque and That's other it. places to open up. Why were they arrested last night? And yet the white militia was allowed to be outside after nine o'clock because they said, listen, Louisville residents, I want you to be clear about what they said. They said that the, the owner of the Shell gas station, the owner of the Shell gas station had the white militia on their property to protect them. So they're telling you who they with. So if you continue to go to the Shell gas station Later. as a person, Later. a black person in this city, Later. or any person who claims to support boycott. our cause, you ain't, you boycott ain't, you got it Later. twisted. Boycott Bader. Boycott Bader. You boycott Bader immediately. We have no reason to go back to that gas station since they are standing with the white militia. And it's on First and Jefferson. First and Jefferson. And they shot, yeah, right, and one of their white employees shot a black man down there the other day. And ironically, they put out video of some people in the store throwing things down on the ground afterwards, but they never showed that the reason why that even happened was because a black man was shot there and they held the man who shot him inside the store for two hours to protect him. And the question I have for the media is, where is that story? Why is it that people don't know a black man was shot at a shell station and the white militia is being allowed to stand outside there and protect them? So I'm, I'm done. But I want to tell you that what has actually happened is that one, Breonna Taylor has brought us together. And we will never be separated. And number two, we are prepared to fight until our own death, if it is necessary. Not just for her, but for every single little Breonna Taylor that is watching us, not for what Dr. King did, not for what Coretta Scott King did, not for what those did in the past. They want to know what this generation is going to do to stand for freedom and justice. And I'm telling you, we didn't come to play. God bless you. Hey, that, that's why we, that's, Alec, we're going to bring it back. Let's get Mr. Blake in there. She's coming. She's coming. All right. Hey, that's why we call her the queen of this movement. And, and I will tell you, it's so important that we turn this moment into a movement that we transform this pain into power. Yeah. That we transform this protest into policy. Mm -hmm. So I, I do want to announce that on October 14th, which is George Floyd's birthday, mm. we want to have a national get out to vote mm -hmm. rally right. in cities all across right. America. Right. I know uh, Reverend Al and George Floyd's family are going to go lead a march in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I pray that Bianca and Tamika and Lanita and Tamika again yeah. will help lead a march yes, to vote for Brianna yeah. on that day in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. We're asking for people all across America whose families have been afflicted by police brutality to go to the front line and help lead people to the polls because the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing and expect different results. And I know that no candidate is perfect, no. but you vote for the candidate who has the interest most aligned with your interest, that's right. and that's all we're going to say. That's right. Now, now, right now, we're bringing a brother who came a long way to be here. And if you've seen any of his interviews, you know he come from...